the early 13th century, the Teutonic Knights, history's most famous Germanic military order, first entered Prussia at the invitation of a Polish duke, Conrad of Masovia. Conrad was concerned about his border, which had often been harassed by the pagan tribes that inhabited the Prussian wilderness. At the time, the Teutonic Order was firmly committed to its mission in the Holy Land. However, the Grand Master, Hermann von Salza, felt that he could not refuse Duke Conrad's request. Hermann was a man of considerable vision, and he grasped that the Prussian frontier could hold the key to his order's future. In 1230, a small force of Teutonic Knights arrived on the fringes of the Prussian forests. They were commanded by Conrad von Landsberg, whose mission was to establish a foothold in the lands granted by the Duke of Masovia. Landsberg's contingent was made up of younger, newer recruits, as well as brothers too ill or injured to join the Grand Master for the Holy Roman Emperor's Holy Land Crusade. On the south bank of the Vistula River, the Teutonic Knights established their first Prussian fortress, called Vogelsong, that is, Bird Song, so named by the German crusaders because there sang many a wounded man, not as the nightingale sings, but with the sorrowful song that the swan sings as he is killed. Soon, reinforcements arrived under the command of Master Hermann Balk, a highly competent warrior who would lead the Prussian crusade for many years. By 1231, the Teutonic Order had built another castle called Thorn, opposite the site of Vogelsong. Two years later, an army of German and Polish crusaders gathered here, marching northeast to establish the fortress of Marienwerder in Pomesania about halfway between Thorn and the sea. Some of the Crusaders remained into the winter when they were joined by the Dukes Sventopelk and Sambor of Pomeralia for an invasion of Pagasania. At the Battle of Ryzen, on the frozen surface of the river, the Crusaders confronted a force of Prussian warriors. The pagans advanced in a phalanx formation but they were panicked by the appearance of Pomeralian knights at their rear. The Prussians tried to flee, but they were destroyed by an ambush put in place by Sventapelk. These early campaigns established a pattern. Each year, a Crusader army, generally composed of Germans and Poles, arrived to join the Teutonic Brothers in an attack on the Prussians. Each year, the result was the same. The Teutonic Knights expanded their territory, with new fortresses often being built. The Prussian warriors showed remarkable courage and tenacity, mustering year after year to oppose the annual invasion. However, the pagans simply could not stand up to the heavy Western cavalry. Once the Crusader army had dispersed for the season, the Teutonic brothers would retire to their castles, where they were safe from Prussian counterattacks. The Polish Crusaders provided the numbers necessary for the annual campaigns of conquest, while the Teutonic Knights garrisoned the castles during the off-season. As celibate monks, the Teutonic brothers were willing to man the fortresses through the wet months and the bitter winter nights. The Teutonic Knights continued to expand their monastic state in Prussia throughout the 1230s. In the eastern hinterland of the Vistula River, forts were established at Raiden in 1234 and Christburg in 1237. These crusader outposts attracted colonists from Poland and Germany, as well as Dominican missionaries eager to spread Christianity among the Prussians. 
The Teutonic Brothers even began carving out rural estates for secular knights, willing to settle and commit their swords long term to the crusade. After participating in a seasonal crusade, the Margrave of Meisen gifted Master Hermann Bulk two large boats. The Order then used these vessels to strike out north from Marienwerder and establish the fortress of Elbing on the delta of the Vistula in 1237. Immediately, citizens from Lübeck colonized Elbing. From there, the Crusaders pressed northeast toward Samland, severing the Prussians from the coast and establishing the castle of Balga in 1239. Cut off from their main trade route, the Pomasanians and Pagasanians, two major Prussian tribal groups, came to terms with the German brother knights. By now, the Teutonic Order was poised to encircle the remaining defiant pagans and link their Prussian lands with their territory in Livonia, creating a Latin Christian bloc from Prussia to Estonia. But pushback was coming, and not just from the pagan Prussians. The rapid success of the order roused the ire of one of their old allies, Duke Sventapelk of Pomeralia. Sventapelk felt that the new trading centers at Marienwerder and Elbing were competing with his own merchants. In 1242, he forged an alliance with the pagan Prussians, and together they ravaged Teutonic forts and destroyed the settlements in Comerland. This turned into a 10-year war. Sventapelk built his own forts to oppose the Teutonic castles and used his river fleet of 20 ships to harass the German settlements. Meanwhile, the pagan Prussians, unable to overcome the Teutonic Knights in open battle, perfected a technique of ambush that allowed them to pin down, cut off, and annihilate Teutonic contingents. However, the Teutonic brothers maintained their war effort, and the conflict seemed to devolve into a stalemate. The balance was tipped by other Polish princes who wanted to join the German order in dislodging Sventapelk from the mouth of the Vistula. Also, the Pope preached a crusade against Sventapelk, accusing him of interfering with the church's work in the region. Faced with this opposition, Sventapelk relented and agreed to share the Vistula Delta with the Teutonic Knights. The setbacks of the 1240s prompted the Teutonic Order to prepare for a long, grueling war of repression. To deal with the guerrilla tactics of the pagans, they began recruiting native Prussian militiamen who proved quite effective at disrupting coordinated Prussian attacks. Converted Prussian nobles were even incorporated into the Christian cavalry and are described in the sources as native knights. But most importantly, Pope Innocent IV granted the Teutonic Brothers the privilege of a perpetual crusade in 1245, allowing the order to recruit volunteers for the Holy War year-round. The Treaty of Christburg in 1249 afforded the converted native Prussians civil liberties, provided they adhered to Christian law. The 1250s were a time of resurgence for the Teutonic Knights. On their Livonian front, one of their major enemies, Mindigus of Lithuania, converted to Christianity. The Teutonic brothers respected his conversion, ceased attacking his territories, and embraced the opportunity to make him an ally. Meanwhile, the pagan Prussians suffered their greatest setback from 1254 to 1256, with the arrival of a massive German crusader army led by King Odegar II of Bohemia, the single most powerful ruler in the Holy Roman Empire. 
The Bohemian king's army was so large that the pagan natives realized that resistance was futile. Odegar built the fortress of Konigsberg, named in his honor, and secured Teutonic control over Samland. This appeared to be the decisive moment. Latin Christendom seemed poised to triumph completely in the Baltic. However, the 1260s would see the Prussian tribes unite in an uprising of hitherto unknown power and coordination. This revolt, known to history as the Great Prussian Uprising, would bring the Teutonic Order in the Baltic to the brink of destruction.